Stan Gibalisco here uh, with a little bit of a report on my transition from one uh, local internet service provider to another resulting in a speed improvement of about 1000 percent 10 times faster uh, both download and upload and I especially appreciate the upload improvement because it means that I can do longer videos uh, for other purposes besides here on YouTube and they don't take forever to upload anymore to my online uh, storage facility. Anyway, what I'd like to get at is a question that I wondered about. What effect does a cable splitter have on internet speed? Now when I uh, switched to this new internet service provider, I um, did away with my television. I I didn't have them connect the television at all, the cable TV, because I just don't watch cable TV. I don't watch TV at all. If I want to watch anything like that, I'll either watch it here on YouTube or some similar venue, or I will uh, get a, a DVD and put it in my old TV set, which, believe it or not, can actually play VHS tapes, too. It's kind of old, but... It, you know, if I want to do that, and then I don't have to contend with all that nonsense that comes along with commercial television. Well, of course, I'll miss out on public television, but you can't have everything, I guess. I decided TV wasn't worth paying for, and I got the high-speed internet instead. But that cable splitter was still there in the line. Now, here's the way that it works. Here is the, well, the wire from the street right here. There's cables running along utility poles in the street. The new uh, internet service provider's technician put a special box up there on one of the utility poles and ran a cable to my house with a brand new uh, box, a little box in there that converts the signal in some way or another for internet and telephone. So this was all new cable right here, and it came in. But once the cable got into the house from that box, it was my old cable. And what it had here was a cable splitter that went to the television upstairs and also upstairs to my modem and router. A... Um, new modem that they gave me uh, to contend with this high speed in some cases up to 80 megabits per second down and 25 megabits per second up uh, at its best wireless router brand new linksys router that i uh, i went in and to best buy here in rapid city and asked them what was the best router you got and they, they told me this one, a Linksys uh, EA 6900, something like that. It can go uh, easily contend with the speeds. And so there's the modem and the router. And then there's computers all over the house. But I never use more than one of them at a time because I'm only one person. And I never leave them connected and running all by themselves. So here we go. Well, unless I'm downloading some huge file, and then I just let it go ahead and I do something else. But here's the rub. What about this splitter? This is a cable splitter. Now, presumably there's a transformer and, a, uh, and some kind of an impedance matching circuit in that splitter. It doesn't just branch off into two separate lines connected together at a point. There is uh, some component in there that ensures what they call an impedance match. This is my theory anyway. So you get a better, more efficient transfer of signal. But instead of a TV being here on this other line now, nothing at all. It just went out into uh, into space and terminated in an open circuit. Now when you have a length of cable that terminates in an open circuit or a short circuit, not a load that it's designed to terminate in, you're, you might get some radio frequency 
problems because of resonances or specific wave actions along that line. It's rather complicated radio frequency theory, but basically you can, you can have a problem with that. So I tested my internet speed on a server uh, and found that even with this contraption, even with this arrangement, I could still at times get up to 75 megabits per second. But from moment to moment, from hour to hour, from minute to minute, from location to location of the remote server, you will see widely variable results because there are a lot of factors besides just what's happening here at my location that affect how fast stuff comes down to me on the internet. The servers might be more busy at some times than others. Intermediate nodes, there might be more or fewer of them at different times. But over time, I, you can get a kind of a ballpark feeling, and I at times got up to 75 megabits per second download. My upload speeds are much more consistent. They are more usually about 20 megabits per second going up can vary anywhere from 18 or 19 coming down up to 80 plus, sometimes 81, 82 megabits per second down, but almost always 20 megabits per second going up. Okay, so that's fine. That's well and good. Now, what we have then is this arrangement, and I didn't like that. It made me nervous to think that this piece of cable was sitting there like that, so I disconnected it and let the splitter just sit there. Um... I just disconnected that wire and now we had just this. But I was still bothered by those open connections at the splitter. I tested the speed again and about the same result. But what I ultimately decided to do, because I'm kind of a, an elegance freak, I wanted things to be elegant. So I just spliced those together with an inline connector and wrapped it not once, not twice, not three times, but four layers of insulating waterproof tape because the weather around here can get pretty vicious. And actually this splitter is under the woodshed, in the woodshed, which is underneath a deck and it can drip down in there and freeze and do all sorts of bad things. So. I just spliced it like that. Now I've just got the, the box here. It goes right to the modem and the router, which serves both the telephone and the computer systems. And when I tested it, lo and behold, once again, I still got just about the same speeds. Now I was told by those who ought to know that this was what to expect. But I do believe that the signal that's getting to my modem right there is now more robust. So if there is a situation where the signal uh, is marginal or the noise increases, I've got a better chance of staying connected and having better reliability. It's more robust. And the other thing is too, it's just more elegant from an engineering standpoint. And as I remember, um, I believe it was Steve Jobs at Apple Computer who once uh, uh, was, was saying to one of his engineers that he wanted the computer to look nice inside as well as out. And the engineer said, now I'm not sure this was Steve Jobs, but it sounds like it must have been him or someone like him. He said, ah, the consumer may never know what's in there, but you will. Meaning that there is something to be said for elegance. I just feel better now. I've got a more substantial installation. But from an actual improvement standpoint today, I didn't see any difference to speak of. So, you know, if you, if you encounter a situation like this, you want to get rid of a splitter, I'd say go ahead and get rid of it if you don't need it. Make sure that you provide a very robust, a very substantial uh, splice right there 
so that you're not going to have problems with that. But the, you know, the fewer junctions, the fewer complications in your system, all other things being equal, the better results you're going to see. So that is my verdict. I did it. I'm happy with it. Now the TV is really disconnected. Even if I decide I want it back, I'm going to have to have a technician come out and splice another splitter in there. But so what? I'm never going to watch TV again. Never. I, I, I did for years without it. I did for years without a car, too. You know, there's a lot of stuff you can do without. But the Internet is not among them. Stan Jubilisco, not for this nerd anyway, Stan Jubilisco, signing off. Until next time, have a great day and so long.